Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the Enterprise Main Stage is where we turn our attention. I'm pleased to introduce to you someone who's become a very important part of the sport, certainly one of the great families of the sport. He's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Leroy Smith. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, if you can make your way down here to the big screens and here on the big stage where we have our uh, Women in Wrestling Forum, I'll uh, welcome everyone now to uh, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame's launching of its 2015 Educational Outreach Exhibit on Women in Wrestling. Uh, you will discover, much like I have, that uh, women expressed a desire as you, to wrestle as far back as 330 BC. And we fast forward that to 1987 and you'll find that uh, women's passion to compete in wrestling took a big leap forward when FILA sponsored the international governing body, which is now known as World United World Wrestling, sponsored its first world championship in 1987 in Norway. We know from firsthand experience that girls were taking up the sport here in the United States in the late 1970s and early 1980s, but had to train and compete against boys if they wanted to wrestle. With Title IX legislation, female wrestlers hope that they, like other female student athletes in other sports, could someday participate in girls-only wrestling competitions. This hope was fueled by our national governing body, which is co-sponsoring this exhibit with the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and President Jim Ravenek behind me. We thank you for your sponsorship of our Women in Wrestling exhibit. But this hope was fueled with their sponsorship of also national, the first senior women's national championship in 1990. Then quickly, with, they followed with other divisions for all age groups for women's wrestling, including a national team. There are seven states that now sanction a state high school championship for girls in the United States. 24, uh, approximately 25 collegiate teams just rep were represented at the Women's National Colleg Collegiate Championships in January of this year. Here in the United States, where sports grow from a foundation of youth opportunities progressing to high school state championships and on to opportunities for student athletes to compete at the intercollegiate levels. Wrestling is at a point where it will either flounder or take a leap forward for women. So what are we gonna do now? This is the question, this is the topic that we're, our esteemed panelists will take up here today. And I'd like to introduce our chairman of our Board of Governors for the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Terry Shockley, for a few comments. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Uh, we are very, very proud uh, to present this program today. So on behalf of the Board of Governors of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, we take great pride in introducing you today to some of the distinguished women and a male panelist as well, who will outline for you the exciting future of women's wrestling, uh, not only in the U.S., but throughout the world. Uh, for those of us that had the opportunity to compete on the wrestling mat, we're so excited to see that young girls today and young women today uh, will have that same opportunity, and that they will, they will learn and grasp the great excitement from the sport of wrestling, and they'll learn many lessons for a lifetime. So again, we're very proud to be a host of this today, and we're very proud of the people we have to present the story of women's wrestling. Thank you, Terry. So let's go now to the front lines of this effort. I want to turn to our respected moderator, who in 1998 became the first female to be inducted in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame as an Order of Merit recipient. Sandy Stevens has been the voice of many state, national, and international wrestling competitions in the sport 
and she is now presiding over the 34th NCAA Wrestling Championship in her career as a public address announcer here in St. Louis. So please give it up for Sandy Stevens. Thank you, Leroy, and welcome. We hope some other people will come this way. We need young girls, any girls. We need young women. We need moms. We need males to hear the story of women in wrestling. First, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure, my honor, to introduce our panelists. To my immediate left is a woman who is the current team leader for the U.S women's world team. She's been an advocate for women's wrestling at the local, national, and international levels. She also serves as president of the board of Beat the Streets New York. Please welcome Mrs. Kira Berry. Next to Kira is a Denver native, a resident athlete at the Colorado Springs Olympic Training Center and current member of the women's world team. Last year, she captured the world championship at 75 kilos. In 2012, she was both a senior world champion and a university champion, a world champion. She was also a junior world champion in 2008. Please welcome Miss Adeline Gray. The gentleman with us is the development director for United World Wrestling, our international governing body for our sport. He was instrumental in the recent United World Wrestling Super 8 campaign to promote women's wrestling around the world. He's from Ireland, but he's living in Switzerland, working for UWW, all the way from Switzerland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Lucas O'Callaghan. Our next panelist is the first U.S. woman to win a world wrestling title and the only one to win more than two. She won a record 11 U.S. National Women's Freestyle Championships and triumphed at 11 World Team Trials events. When she competed her competitive career in 2001, she had never lost a single match to a U.S. competitor, a distinguished member of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, a true pioneer of women's wrestling. Please help me welcome Mrs. Tricia Saunders. And finally, a panelist who played soccer at Columbia University. She's the founder of Move, Live, Learn, a company dedicated to improving lives through health, through physical education and coaching, sport and coaching development. She's researched male and female youth wrestling throughout North America and has done international research related to elite women wrestlers and social mobility that was sponsored by United World Wrestling. The mother of two sons who wrestled, she also presented at the National Wrestling Coaches Convention. Please welcome Dr. Amanda Stanek. Our first question is for all of our, or any of our panelists, and then I will be asking individual panelists a question. For all of you, why is including wrestling women in wrestling specifically, why is including women in wrestling so important? All right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll jump with that. Um, you know, women make up over half the population in this country uh, and certainly have a large presence in all of our educational institutions. And women and girls want to be just as active as boys. And we've seen that particularly over the last generation and a half. And wrestling is a terrific opportunity in all the things and skills, um, both physical, um, 
social and intellectual that it provides for boys, it does the same thing for girls, and there's no reason that they shouldn't have the same opportunity as a young boy to get out there and, and compete in something that they find interesting and have a passion for. Would any of the rest of you like to comment? Yeah, I think um, it's important to, to notice as well on the international level that um, as part of the IOC's Olympic 2020 agenda, they've stated very clearly that gender equity is very much on, on the, uh, the horizon and uh, they're pushing to have this. And if we want to be an inclusive part of the Olympic movement, it's very important for the sport that we embrace that and we, we continue to develop that aspect of the sport. So not only on the mat, but off the mat as well. And I think that's, it's a stated aim of the IOC and it makes sense for us to try and, try and follow those aims. Thank you. Anyone else? Trisha. I uh, think it's very important to include girls and women in wrestling because wrestling um, has such wonderful things to offer that most of us uh, who've been in the sport for a long time know. It teaches you to train. It teaches you to work hard. It teaches you uh, that a lot of times all the effort you put in doesn't pay off this time or next time and being able to uh, take a win and taking a loss that is 100% yours, not as a team sport, get your hand raised or have it put down and walk with your chin up, at least till you make it to the bathroom before you cry. <laughs> but these kind of lessons are something that is so important for all children to know, for young adults to know, and for seniors to know that I don't think very many sports uh, teach quite in the same way like wrestling does. And uh, to have it offered originally only uh, many decades ago to half the world's population, I think is a little bit of a tragedy. There's so much that uh, the rest of the population, the rest of the 50% of us that uh, um, would uh, have to live in this world and achieve and move forward can get from this sport. And uh, I, I think to see it open up for the rest of us and get all the exact same things the men has is just hugely, hugely important. Thank you. Let's go to Adeline now. Adeline has three younger sisters, by the way, one who plays soccer at the Air Force Academy. Adeline, what are your hopes for the future of women in wrestling? I've been really lucky with my career. I've had a very strong support system all through um, the Colorado wrestling that I was a part of up until USA Wrestling got a hold of me. And I really just hope that same method happens for other girls and just that opportunity to step on the mat and be treated as an athlete because that's all we're really asking. We're asking to be treated as athletes when we step out on that mat. And that's what I hope, that equality be pushed just a little bit further and a little bit stronger as the support gets better and better for those opportunities for women. What advice do you have for young female wrestlers? I think the same advice that I'd give male wrestlers. I mean, um, it's a tough sport and you really have to commit to it. You have to really love what you're doing and, and learn something from it. Every time you step out on that mat, you can learn something. And I think that's just an opportunity that the wrestling allows you to have. And that's the, the lesson I would like young men and young women to take from this sport. The fact that it is a tough sport and you can learn something about yourself and better yourself for what you're doing out there on the mat. Thank you. Lucas, you talked about the importance of women in wrestling to the United World Wrestling and to the Olympic movement. What's been done by United World Wrestling to address the issue of gender and excuse me, gender equity or inequity so far. Yeah, I think we've um, we've started, you know, with with some some very realistic things that could be changed. So I think first of all, the weight classes at the at the Olympic Games. This is a, a change going from four to six. So that's a good step in the right direction on the mat. Um, off the mat, on the political structure, we've adjusted our constitution to ensure that there will be female representation on our board. And right now, we have about 20% representation on our board, uh, which is called a bureau. Um, and that 20% is you know, based on academic research around the world on other international federations. It's a pretty good baseline, but we also know that we can improve it. Um, and I think, you know, we, when we started the rebranding of the new organization, we really embraced uh, the idea of promoting gender equity and more opportunities for women. And that was where the Super 8, came, 8, Super 8 campaign came about. 
Um, and the Super 8 campaign was really a chance for role models to be created for women because they, they definitely existed, but maybe they weren't promoted. So I'm looking at Adeline here on my right. I had a chance to talk with her this morning, and she's an inspirational athlete of today. But turn to my left, and I have Trisha Saunders, who's you know done things that I, I can't even imagine how she got through some of the things she did in the past. But those stories need to be shared, they need to get out, and that was what Super 8 was about. Um, it also gave a platform for national federations to really embrace the change and do something about it as well. And I think USA Wrestling is a good example. Um, they really got behind the campaign, they had their Women's Wrestling Week, they opened up their clubs, they really got behind and supported the campaign. And I think that's had a, it's had an impact. And if you look at even the clinics that they did for girls uh, through Beat the Streets and other activities, that really high turnout. But if we take other federations, not just big federations that are capable, like USA, that have been you know, trying to push this agenda for a long time. Um, I just came back from Senegal a couple of weeks ago, and they got behind their champion, which is Isabel Sambu. And her story is incredible. She comes from a little village, no uh, running water, no electricity. But she's the champion of her village, and her whole village is behind her, the men in the village singing for her. And it was something I, I never imagined I would see. So every federation has a chance to get behind it and change it. So we've done things on the policy side, but also on the practical side. And we hope to continue that in the future. Um, part of that is that we've hired a women's development officer, which is a female wrestler from Switzerland, Nadine Tokar. And uh, Nadine is transitioning out of her career as an athlete at the moment, probably finished after Rio. And it's, it's good to have a female wrestling expert beside me in my work uh, because I, sometimes I get lost and she gets me back on track. But equally, we work with the Commission of Women in Sport Commission, of which Trisha Saunders is a member as well. And as commissions go, it's one of our better commissions. We thrash things out, we get things done, and Super 8 was a product of that commission. So. I think we're going in the right direction, but we've got a lot more to do. And I think with willing partners like USA Wrestling and others, we can, we can really achieve a lot. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned um, Trisha's accomplishments. Trisha, as I recall, you won at least one of your world championships when you were a mom. Two, actually. Both of them. And you might have been the first mother, the first mom to win a women's world championship. Yeah, and uh, uh, Christy uh, uh, Murano also has uh, joined the club, I, but I think it's just the two of us. We're both Americans, so yeah. So we'll go now for a question for Tricia. How has women's wrestling changed since you started competing? Uh, women's wrestling has changed a lot. I actually started competing in wrestling in 1975, and I was the only girl I ever saw Russell. I had never competed against a girl since uh, um, till 1989. And I had been told uh, uh, things for so long that, oh, girls can't wrestle. Well, except for you. <laughs> girls can't do this, and they're not going to be strong. And so the first time I ever went to train with a girl, there's part of me that kind of, I'm embarrassed of myself, halfway believed it. I had the Afsun Roshan Zamir, who's uh, one of our first world medalists, came out to train with me, and she was a real pretty girl with big hair and she walked up and I thought, oh, she's a girl, I hope I don't hurt her. And then she locked up my head and gave me a black eye head butted me in the face and all bets were off after that. And I realized, you know, it's, it's not just me. She helped me train for my first uh, tournament and I went over, I was very nervous and I walked into a tournament in France with 200 girls at it. So if I've only met one other girl wrestler ever in my life and I walk into a room with 200 girls, and this was in 1990, I came back to the United States and I said, hey, hey, this thing is going on that's big. And a lot of people would tell me, no, it's gonna take time, you know, girls aren't ready for this. And I'm like, no, 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 you understand. It's all over the world. We have countries that are competing, there's a world championship, and uh, it's taken a while to get, come on here. And there's but the biggest changes I've seen is here in the United States of the competition where we have several girls now that have the potential to medal. And our national tournament is a really tough draw just to make a team where back when I competed, it, it was for you were always looking